Let's review what we covered in an earlier lesson on simple harmonic motion. A restoring force is a force that acts to bring things back to a state of equilibrium. In simple harmonic motion, the restoring force is directly proportional to the displacement from equilibrium. And the term amplitude refers to the maximum displacement from equilibrium. So here's a diagram of a pendulum. The red colored bob that shows where the pendulum is at its equilibrium position. And here we have it at its extreme left and its extreme right as the pendulum swings back and forth. The length of the pendulum is designated by the capital letter L. The amplitude of the pendulum is indicated by theta. And the mass of the bob would be m. So if we look a little more closely, let's take the bob when it's on the extreme right here. There's a downward force on the pendulum bob from gravity, and then there's the tension in the rope. Those are the two forces that act on the pendulum bob when it's right there. The restoring force is this component of the tension. This restoring force acts to pull this bob back towards the equilibrium position. What we can do here is we can see that simple geometry suggests that the restoring force is equal to the tension in the string times the sine of theta. Well, as the bob swings back, that restoring force is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller until it hits zero when it gets to the equilibrium position. Well, then it overshoots, and the restoring force then starts pointing to the right to try and bring the bob again back to equilibrium. No matter what the tension is, if we take various angles in degrees and we calculate the sine, and if we convert those degree measurements into radians. Now, 2 pi radians is one time around a circle, 360 degrees. So if we use a conversion between degrees and radians, we can figure out how many radians each of these degrees represent. Now look at that. Look at how close the sine of theta and theta in radians match, especially for small angles. And you can see as the angle gets bigger and bigger, the deviation becomes a little bit greater. And we're going to go with this statement. For angles less than 15 degrees, a simple pendulum closely approximates simple harmonic motion, since the sine of theta is approximately equal to theta, which makes the storing force approximately proportional to the angle. What about the energy of a simple pendulum? At the extreme left and the extreme right, the bob has no kinetic energy, because at the extreme left and the extreme right, the bob is not moving for an instant. It's going the fastest when it's at its equilibrium position. So we're going to get a curve, something like that, for the kinetic energy of this bob. The gravitational potential energy has to do with how high above the ground, let's say, the bob is. And clearly, it's highest off the ground at the extreme points, and it's lowest or closest to the ground at the equilibrium position, which means that the gravitational potential energy curve looks kind of like that. And what does that mean for us? Obviously there are no springs. We're not going to consider any elastic effects, so that line can be considered zero. The total energy of this simple pendulum system is a constant assuming friction is negligible, if you add up this 
dashed curve plus this thin solid curve, add those up, you get this dark line there, constant as this pendulum goes back and forth. And here are a few examples of pendulums. The pendulum in a grandfather clock, a swing is essentially a pendulum, and of course a wrecking ball.